Hey everybody, it's Rob, and today, real quick, I want to talk about the Mamiya 6 system. Now, this is a camera system that, when I first bought it, um, it worked great, and, and it does still work great. But there's a few things you should know about the Mamiya 6 when you get it that, you know, when you start using it, you might think something's broken. The real deal is, is that there's a lot of interlocks inside of this system. And essentially what that means is that if you try to do a certain function and you get this red dot, like this, up in the, uh, the top right corner of the viewfinder, the problem is, is that there's an interlock somewhere in the system of this camera that's preventing you from doing that. It's more or less a safety precaution. So real quick, if you bought a Mamiya 6 from a friend or off of a, a seller on eBay and you think that something's broken with it, watch this video through. Let's go through it real quick and uh, I'll try to hit some of the points that might um, be a few pitfalls for the first time Mamiya 6 owner. Now the first thing is, is that uh, if you want to actually use this camera system, unlike the Mamiya 7, this has a retractable uh, lens mount, which is really neat um, because it actually makes the, the camera system a lot more portable. But um, the problem is, is that if it's not retracted out fully, then you won't be able to use it. So the little button here on the bottom, this little black guy, you want to push that one in. Make sure you pull out the lens mount all the way. Give it a couple little light tugs. Don't yank on it. Don't do anything stupid. Just very lightly pull it out and make sure that it's retracted all the way. Um, there are leaf shutters inside the lenses on the Mamiya 6 system, so make sure that you don't uh, mistreat your lens or bump your lens. Um, don't, you know, don't do anything stupid that would actually <laughs> cause any physical harm to it. But yeah, that's, that's what it has to look like. So it has to be fully retracted with this button right here. That's one of the first things you have to do. Um, another thing that gets people often is that the little silver button on the side here is uh, what you use to actually remove the lens. So when you push that one in, you try to remove it, well, the problem is, is that it's not going to come off. Now, the reason for that is, is that you have the, uh, there's essentially, since, like I said, these are leaf shutters in the lenses here. So if you were to pull this guy off, you would expose the film that is through here. It's assuming you have film in the camera almost at all times. So the problem is, is that you need to uh, activate a built-in dark slide before you can remove the lens. That built-in dark slide is at the bottom of the camera here. There's this little tiny winder that actually uh, pulls the, sh the dark shield, the little cloth shield across the film plane so that you won't expose the film on there. So what you want to do is you have to move this over to put that shield across. Now, here's another pitfall. When you do that, if it's not working, if you can't get that thing to actually go it has a little arrow direction. Let's see if I can hold this up so I can come in on this for a minute. You have to go in the direction of the arrow there. So you have to go in the direction of the arrow. And if you can't do that, it's not broken, right? People think, oh, the lens is stuck. I'm never going to be able to remove the lens. You actually just have to cock the shutter. So cock it very lightly, just one time. And now you can pull this guy all the way up till it snaps. Give it a nice little ring there. Once it snaps in place, you're good to go. I'm going to show you that on the inside too. When you open the back of the camera, there's that little curtain that goes across. So now, now the camera says, okay, the, the, the dark slide is in place. Now you can push this silver button in and you can feel it go in and a gentle turn and you can remove the lens. Okay. So that's how you take the lens mount actually off. And again, shutters are in here. So since that cloth, dark slide is across, the, the, the camera knows that you're not going to accidentally expose any film, so it feels good with that. And then you just it's just a matter of matching the white dot to the white dot on the body. And you don't have to push in too hard, just let it you know fit snugly. And then you just pull it back, snap it in like any other lens, and you're good to go. So, you think you're great, you go to take your next shot, you can't take your shot for whatever reason, right? Again, red dot shows up. The problem there is, is that you actually have to retract that uh, dark slide. And to do that, there's a little button here with the arrow and you push it, you pull it down and, and toward the direction of the arrow and you'll hear a little retract sound. You'll hear the curtain snap back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. That was the actual sound of the curtain snapping back out of place. So now you can go ahead and take that shot. What a lot of people will do then is click on the shutter. Maybe, maybe you don't have any film loaded, but you're just testing it when you got it. And even though you've cocked the shutter, you're trying to test your new lens. 
for some reason the dry fire is not working. Again, this is a caveat, or a little pitfall rather, that got me when I first got the Mia 6. You want to test all the shutter speeds on this brand new lens, you, might, you know, you want to test all these things to make sure everything's working properly, but you're trying to dry fire and it's not working. Again, the camera's not broken. Uh, go ahead and push that button down, open the back of it. Here's another view of what the inside looks like without that curtain, so you can see through the lens. When the back is open, that's actually when you can fire the lens. So you cock it and fire the lens. Gotcha. So um, let me just change the, let me change the, I'll go to bulb mode real quick. Cock it and so you can see through, make sure everything's working properly. Um, other little pitfalls. Here's a dumb one, but this, <laughs> this I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fully admit this happened to me. There's a button in the middle of the shutter speed dial, and there's a button to the side of it too. And I will confess that when I was locked on to the automatic exposure, I would try to push this button over here to move it out of auto exposure, and it wasn't working, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's stuck in auto exposure. It wasn't. Uh, that is not the button to do that. That is actually going to be the button in the middle that you push that down to move these guys. That other button that I pushed before actually moves the exposure. If you if you can see that, that's actually moving the exposure compensation uh, up and down. You push and hold that, and then you can freely move that dial for exposure compensation. So if you ever move that by accident, that's how you get it back. So that's the top there. Obviously, you have your shutter button. Um, you know, there's one other thing I wanted to mention, and that is that obviously this takes some batteries. The batteries go down here. Uh, it's just a couple of LR44s, I believe. Um, and it's important that you always check those batteries. I mean, that should be the very first thing that you do. If you're experiencing any issues with the Mimi S6, put a couple of fresh batteries in there. And I don't mean like the, the ones you get off of Amazon that are like, you know, $7 for a 50 pack of them. You know, go out to your local Publix or Kroger, Tom Thumb, wherever you shop, Walgreens, CVS, any, anywhere, right? Get a couple of Duracells or Energizers or something. Yeah, obviously they, they charge like $4 for just three of them, but um, you, you know you're getting a, a quality battery. So it's, it's absolutely fresh. Throw a couple of those in there and that should be your starting point. Um, oftentimes on those Amazon batteries, I've thrown some, some of them in to the camera and for whatever reason, it still doesn't work. Um, and it just turns out those are dead batteries and I don't have any way to test those like a voltmeter or anything. So I just have to usually rely that rely on the fact that whatever I'm getting out of the pack is actually good, but in some cases it isn't. So you have to be aware of that. So that's pretty much it for the, uh, the Mamiya 6 uh, pitfalls there. Again, no, your Mamiya 6 is not broken. Uh, it just has a lot of little, you know, pitfalls and caveats that you have to think about. You know, make sure the lens is fully retracted. You know, when you want to travel with it, make sure you put it back down like that. Make sure your lens cap is off if you're using automatic exposure. Um, otherwise, you're just going to get some weird exposure readings. Um, yeah, all kinds of other great stuff. It's, uh, you know, the, the dark slide, it's a really handy feature, but just make sure that that thing is retracted. Um, when you want to shoot uh, and make sure that it is uh, in place when you want to change the lenses. And again, if you see that little red dot in the corner of the viewfinder, that is exactly the Mimia 6 just saying that, uh, you know, before I let you do this, you have to do this. Um, and for new people that are jumping into the Mimia 6, you might not know about that stuff. Uh, again, this is all written in the manual. As a matter of fact, I think the way they explain it in the manual is by using the word interlocks in like capital letters with exclamation points. So um, they're basically saying there are interlocks in this system. Um, be aware of those. And uh, I think you're going to have a really pleasant uh, shooting experience with the Mamiya 6. So uh, if uh, anything comes up that I forgot to mention in here, I'll put it in the description below. But I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, if you have any additional questions or you just want to talk with Mamiya 6, throw them in the comments and we'll keep the conversation going. As always, hey, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.